I think it is time to talk about everything we know about Pokemon. Let's go Pikachu and Eevee and wonder is this game for you or not? Let's find out. <laughs> What's up beast people, Tito's here and welcome to a new video on the channel. Today I'm gonna basically do a video where I'll talk about everything of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee which are about to come out in a month and today I'll just drop all my thoughts on everything and kind of review what the game looks like to me and maybe give you guys an opinion if you should buy it or not, if this game is for you or not because there's been a lot of discussion online about these games and a lot of people are complaining about it, a lot of people are saying this game is bad, some people say this game is the best, some others are just okay with it, and I feel like there's a lot of clashing opinions online for the first time. And it actually is a game where you should definitely consider this is the type of a game you want to play or not because it is just not for everyone this game is definitely not for everyone and that's where to me personally Game Freak is failing a lot they did not make a game that is supposed to be for everyone they kind of made a game focused on just a certain type of player which is mostly Pokemon Go players they want to bring them to the console but I feel like they fail a lot with that they should not be doing that I feel like Game Freak recently has been trying to focus a lot on specific things and they don't look at the overall fan base they have. They don't look at the overall fan base. They sp just focus too much on like the most recent thing that's going on and they're not focusing on what they've built so far and developing it. No, they're just trying to change the formula a lot with every single game now and that just doesn't work well and that's what's happening with Pokemon is that Pokemon slowly especially with older fans is going down now I'm one of those fans that uh, I'm still okay with it I'm still gonna buy Pokemon let's go Pikachu let's go Eevee so if you're interested in seeing the full playthrough all the info on the game all the progress and actually join me and help me complete the Pokedex and I'll help you guys as well and find out everything about that the game has to offer of course subscribe and stay tuned for the future streams in a month uh, almost uh, less than a month actually and to start off we already know a lot about these games there's been a lot of uh, trailers there's been a lot of uh, screenshots a lot of information about it and of course we're checking out all of this on Serbi.net, which is probably the best news website for Pokemon so link will be down below in the description where you can check out all the info about any game Let's go Pikachu and Eevee as well. We're on the Let's go Pikachu and Eevee uh, section right now. And there's all this stuff here. We have the pre-release screenshots, the pre-release videos. I mean, if you can just go to YouTube as well and check all those out. And uh, overall, the game is basically a remake of Kanto. It is a remake of Pokemon Yellow specifically because it has the main uh, starter, Pikachu. And this time, Eevee as well. To follow you and they're exclusive they cannot evolve which is uh, it's okay uh, okay they can't evolve and they follow you around they're like your best buddy and they kind of want to uh, imitate the anime at least that's what Pokemon Yellow tried to do back in the day they tried to imitate the anime with Ash and Pikachu they did the same thing and now since they're trying to remake those games they're doing the same here with Pikachu and they added Eevee as the second uh, version so he is the second starter because the starter you have depends on the game that you pick now overall is an HD version of what I would say probably X and Y because we go back to the chibi uh, characters uh, model style and the overworld though it is a uh, well sized though the buildings are on on point they, they look amazing they look pretty good but I would say overall it is more X and Y style so this is like a remake of Kanto in X and Y for the switch in HD so that's kind of what it feels like if you really look at it, it it really just feels like that so that's at least what I would call so it's really not an upgrade from what we got on Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon 
it's definitely its own thing and they've said that this this is a main game but I feel like this is its own thing and it really is its own thing it's a game that is not a continuation from what we got in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon but a continuation for that will be next year 2019 that's when we're gonna get generation 8 game new region new Pokemon's and probably new graphics and new models new world overall so the game can be totally different and much better but today we're discussing let's go today we're gonna i'm gonna basically give you guys my thoughts on everything and you guys will, maybe will decide if this game is for you or not and continuing we have the starter which is basically just pikachu or eevee that's it so you pick one of those two i mean that's pretty cool so far i'll pick pikachu um, because i was gonna pick eevee until the moment i saw, uh, knew that they cannot evolve so if I cannot evolve Eevee, I really don't need an Eevee. I'm really not hyped about Eevee, so I'll go old school and play with Pikachu because I do like Pikachu. So that's uh, my pick right there. And of course, aside from Pikachu and Eevee, which they will always be on your shoulder or in your head or following you around, you can have another Pokemon following you on the overall. As we can see on these screenshots here, you have this one with the Squirtle following you, this one has an Nidoran. So that's a cool thing the game has. We have a Pokemon following you and they're scaled. They're actually scaled and it's amazing. If they're really big, you can actually ride on them and walk around the region with them. So you can fly around on a Charizard. That's actually a lot of hype for me. I love Charizard. You can ride on an Arcanine and run around. That's awesome. That's all really neat, really cool. So this game has like really cool things, you know, that get your attention, but Overall, is it going to be better than Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon? I don't think so, because there's a lot of things on this game that make a lot of people wonder if this game is for them or not. And I personally, as I look at this game, I feel like this game is really not intended for some people. For example, if you're a competitive player, it might be interesting to get into a meta where you only have the very first 151 Pokemon and of course the Kanto Megas. You don't have more Megas, there's only the Kanto Megas, they're actually confirmed. The Kanto Megas. It's pretty cool to have a meta like that while you play Let's Go. That's gonna be very interesting. I myself am interested in it. So if you're interested in something a little bit different for a little bit, at least until the new game comes out, that's a cool experience. Why not? But if you're not a fan of that, if you want to have still competitive battles with all the Pokemon, then of course Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon is where you're gonna have those battles. Now, uh, for example, the gameplay. There's st stuff that changed a lot. For example, uh, when we go into wild battles, you cannot battle the wild Pokemon. Wild Pokemon are not uh, gonna be battled so you cannot grind your Pokemon basically you I mean you can grind them if you catch the Pokemon because you still get experience for capturing Pokemon but the wild encounters basically are the same as in Pokemon Go you just throw Pokeballs that to me personally is really boring really bad bad design because Pokemon was always meant to be a fight it was always meant to be a you use your Pokemon you weaken the opponent and you try to catch them that's how you should catch a Pokemon not just throw a Pokeball and have the uh, the, the enemy Pokemon is just there standing looking at you and you're you're just a trainer and you're just gonna stand there and be like okay throw a Pokeball oh it didn't say here goes another one what is that honestly that's pretty boring so I can understand a lot of people not liking that if that is a very important uh, feature for you in Pokemon games then of course this game is definitely not for you I personally, I'm, I'm gonna play the game, but honestly, that is really bad for me. I really do not like it. I, I just don't like it. I'd rather have the battle than just throwing a Pokeball and that's it. That's way too simple, way too bland, boring, you know? So, that's just me though. It is cool for like going around finding different Pokemons and catching them and completing a Pokedex. I mean, that will make it even easier to complete a Pokedex, honestly. And that's about it. Pokemon following you, really cool feature that everyone loves. So this is definitely eye-catching. This is definitely trying to get uh, every fan's attention, Pokemon following you. But I don't think it's a feature that is gonna be gonna make the game worth buying straight up. It's not, because 
it is a really cool feature makes the game um, more fun but it doesn't make the game better because you know what I mean like it really doesn't change anything in the game it's just aesthetics you know you just get to see the Pokemon on the overworld you just get to ride them that's all that's really all that is so it doesn't really change any mechanics in the game anything actually important in the game so it's not an upgrade it, it is a cool feature that we all love especially in Heart Gold Soul Silver we all loved it and we all want this feature in every game honestly it is a thing that should be in every game but does it make the game better no and in, in theory it really doesn't make the game better so is it worth buying a game just because there's Pokemon following you no it's not it is a really cool feature I mean if you really like it and then you're all crazy about it then of course you should maybe get the game to enjoy that type of feature but I I personally don't think so even though I really like Pokemon following you I love it like I said before I want to ride on the Charizard and fly around the region I want to ride on the Arcanine on the Moltres and all that cool stuff yes but I'm I just would not buy a game just for that now of course I know the game not only has that but that's like one of the main things the game has to offer besides being a remake of yellow that's all and yellow doesn't really have a lot okay yellow doesn't have a lot and that is pretty much it legendary pokemon you do get to battle them so that's at least something they kept you get to battle the legendary pokemon that's only four battles it's only four legendaries not a lot still really happy really difficult battles honestly and they're very difficult to catch if they maintained the difficulty from the old games they are very difficult to catch especially Mewtwo hopefully they didn't nerf them because if they made them easier like the rest of the game then of course that's another thing this game is overall really 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 easier than the previous uh, games because there's a lot of ways to make this game really easy at the same time there's a few things that could be challenging and you can make this game challenging but at the same time there's a, a way to make this game really really easy and we're gonna get to that right now with the Pokemon storage being available in your bag so the PC which heals up your Pokemon entirely and lets you manage between all your Pokemon and change up your team it was only available on Pokemon Center so it was limited Pokemon centers had a function which was to heal your Pokemon so you would not need to go to the PC and you would need to wait to get up uh, into a city to be able to go to a Pokemon Center and heal up your team and it would be more limited now that you have the PC in your bag if you actually use it and it actually heals your Pokemon you don't need a Pokemon Center Pokemon Center is entirely useless besides the shop there's a shop of course you can go there to buy pokeballs but the healing options on the shop are kind of useless as well you may I mean you might get them to use in battle in battle of course you can use them but it becomes useless in this sense of oh I need to buy potions for traveling no because you have a PC on your bag you can just put them on the PC remove them under heal that's all you can, that's it you can heal your Pokemon anytime so again that's a feature that I really don't like it but at the same time it is optional so you will only use it if you really want to so again you can make the game easier or not with that that is really up to you so I personally I don't think I will use it just so it doesn't make the game super easy for me but it is a thing that you can do it is a change in the game is it good or bad I mean it is optional it doesn't really affect a lot honestly it is super optional it is up to you to use it or not is it I mean I would consider more bad than good because since the option is there people tend to go and use it you know so and overall that's like saying hey here's a, here's the thing to just make the game easier but why do they add stuff to make the game easier and not stuff to make the game harder that's the, my question you know and I mean it kind of kills the purpose of a Pokemon Center to me so they really should not do that if they really want Pokemon Centers to be uh, you know important in the game to be used but that's just my opinion though I feel like they're forgetting about the stuff they built so far and they're always trying to change a lot in the, the formula of these games but that's just me 
Another thing that makes the games easier is the two-player co-op. I mean, really neat feature, really cool, you know, you get to play with maybe your little sister, little brother, little cousin, whatever it is, your best friend, um, your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, you know, whoever is playing gets to play with someone else. I mean, that's pretty cool. If the other person could actually have their own team, do their own thing, you know, like, kind of like almost split screen, okay, if they go apart way too much. Split screen, each one has their own adventure, each one gets their badges and everything, but no. It's a shared adventure. You're just there to support your friend. Your Pokemons are the same as the main player. You both get in the same battles, you both capture the Pokemon. Cool! It's neat, but honestly, it just makes the game easier, because in battles it becomes a 2v1 multi-battle, if you have a friend, so basically you're gonna use two Pokemons against your opponent, so if you're ever having a hard time against a gym leader, just call your friend with the other Joy-Con and go into the battle and it'll be a 2v1. You'll ha probably have an easier time at that. So that's a thing, yet again, that's optional. It, it seems fun, but it will just make the game easier. So if you're not a fan of the game being easier, this is not a feature that you're gonna use unless you really just wanna have some chill time, play with someone and just do it, you know? Which I will probably do because I want to play it uh, with my girlfriend and we'll probably do it on live stream. we'll play bits together because that will be fun, you know? But I personally, I'm not gonna be looking for a challenge while I will be playing on co-op. So do not expect a challenge while playing on co-op. Again, it is a thing that, uh, I mean, you again, you can put your own Nuzlocke rules and all that cool stuff, but it will still make the game easier, so that's a thing. And another thing that the games have is the combat points, just like Pokemon Go. They've really changed a lot of the game to be like Pokemon Go. That's why the name Let's Go. So it is understandable. It is a game to attract Pokemon Go players, again. But by being a game that attracts Pokemon Go players, I don't... There's a lot of people that this game is really not for them. And I would say mostly people that like difficult game, People that want maybe a very complex story, like 5th gen, or even 6th gen, you know, like, I mean, 6th gen doesn't have a complex story, but like, Ultra Sun and Moon, they had a better story. If you want a story, this is not the game for you either. If you want, um, uh, no linear adventure, this is not the game either, because they've made this game to be a lot linear. With the gym leader rules, they've actually set rules, and I actually can show you guys here on a pre-release screenshot, that, for example, when you get to a Brock's gym, uh, the dude that's in the entrance, it actually only allows you to enter if you have a type of Pokemon that's super effective against Rock, and I believe in Misty's gym, it has been confirmed that you can only get in if you have a Pokemon that's level 15 or or at least one Pokemon level 15, that's what I want to say. So, again, those things are kind of bad for the game, honestly, they're kind of bad for the game. Uh, me, personally, I don't like those type of things, because the cool thing the old games had was the freedom as well, you could kind of do some of the badges, or most of them, you could do them on the order whatever you wanted. This time it doesn't look like that. I mean, it will be better for like game progression because I do remember some gyms having almost the same levels even though you traveled so it would end up getting kind of easy and I think in yellow it would actually be tough to have freedom because of the levels because Sabrina's gym was way high leveled compared to the others and you could still access early her gym so you would get there and you get destroyed so... I guess that's a way of limiting and making it linear, but it would still be fun to get there and be like, whoa, there's these type of levels here, okay, I need to get here later. That is a, still a cool thing, don't just block off the way, you know, at least let us interact with the world and find out by ourselves. That is something that you're probably not going to be able to find on this game, so if you want freedom in the Pokemon game, yet again, this is not the game for you. Let me actually zoom out a little bit so we can see these screenshots well. Because there's a lot of, like, screenshots about this game. And this game, there's one thing. It looks really good. It looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. We need to give it that. It looks beautiful. And again, following Pokemon are scaled. So you'll see giant Articuno, giant Snorlax, and all that stuff following you. Really cool. There's cutscenes, of course. 
and uh, overall it looks great it looks great look at this stuff you see pokemon on the overworld that's another thing seeing pokemon on the overworld as you're walking instead of them just popping up looks really nice it's a really nice touch now these are all touches that i feel like they will definitely implement in the main games from now on but this specific game with features like uh, let's say the co-op that makes it easier, the PC in your bag, the no wild battles, you only Pokemon Go stuff, the CP instead of the normal EVs and IVs for training your Pokemons, uh, not all Pokemons available, and not uh, a lot of freedom to explore the region, and maybe not as good of a story because there isn't really a story for the first games, I don't really mind it. But all that stuff, it hinders the game and it will definitely not be for all the fans. There's a lot of people that care about those things and I would say that if you're one of those, this game is definitely not for you. If you're just here for the experience of seeing the graphics, walking on the overworld, enjoying your Pokemons, riding them and having some... I guess HD battles and maybe try to get into a competitive meta where there's only the very first generation of Pokemons and Megas. That is pretty cool. You might get a lot of fun out of just that. You know, just that. You might get some fun out of it. You definitely will get some fun out of it. And I will definitely be trying to do that. And uh, the game looks beautiful. So it will definitely be enjoyable to at least uh, see the, how the whole game looks like and play it on your, for yourself. Another cool thing they actually uh, revealed today is that apparently there's what's called uh, Master Trainers for post-game and uh, these Master Trainers, uh, let me actually zoom in so you guys can see this a little bit better on your screens. Okay, this is pretty well zoomed in. So Master Trainers are a unique new feature to Pokemon Let's Go and Pikachu and they are the strongest trainers in Kanto and specialize in one Pokemon challenging you to a mirror match. You can only use one Pokemon the same species as them. They are of high level and have various unique and powerful moves which are not often super which are often super effective against themselves. Not all of the master turns will request a battle. However, some will request a certain task. If you manage to defeat them, you will gain your title of master which can be used when greeted at the Pokemon Center or when you battle with friends locally or online. So, there is 151 trainers on the overworld you will have to beat each to be able to get the title. For example, if you want to be a Charizard Master, here it is, Charizard Master, you'll have to defeat this Charizard that's level 75, and at the moment it's confirmed that it has Thunder Punch, which is a super effective move against himself. So, that's actually a very cool uh, post-game thing, you know, it, it is fun, it is fun, it will make it interesting because that means you will have to have all 151 Pokemons well trained with a good move set to get them to beat a copy of them that's super strong. If you find that fun and you want to get all the titles, maybe you will unlock something in the game. We still don't know that. We'll of course find out with time. But that's a cool thing, you know, neat little thing for post game they added. That's pretty cool. So again. We still don't know all the details, if they haven't revealed all the details like they usually do with most of the recent games, we might still be getting a lot of new stuff in the game, you know, we could still get a lot of new stuff. But so far, the game is basically a remake, with features removed from it and added Pokemon Go stuff into it, and a couple of very little but maybe interesting features into it and that's it features that could easily be in any other game especially from the, the next one from generation 8 pokemon following you could be on the next game and riding on pokemon will most likely be on it as well and uh, maybe the master trainers will become a thing from now on i mean they could easily throw in a 800 plus trainer master challenge. I mean that would be quite a bit post game if you ask me For just a title, but I mean I guess it is something if you want to have it and hey, it's a cool thing to put in the game, you know, but again Now the question is knowing all this stuff about these games Do you want to get Pokemon? Let's go now. I will say it again and wow the wind is getting pretty strong here, but 
do you, should you get Pokemon Let's Go? That's the question. Now, again, if you're a fan of Gen 1, if you are a fan of the Switch, if you like HD graphics, if you don't really mind uh, features changing and all that, of course, go ahead, get this game. This game will have its own fun. That's the best way to put it. The game will have its own fun. If you're looking for a tough game, a challenge, and maybe like a really upgraded Kanto with like amazing Pokemons on it and all that, um, don't don't go don't put your expectations way too high because this might not be the game for you. So again, this is probably the very first game that is not for everyone. It it really is not a game made for everyone. So it has very specific features, very specific little things into it that make it look good but in the end it's probably not gonna be that good like it always happens so again not for everyone it's really not for everyone and I know this because me as a fan of Pokemon I've played all the games and I'm definitely gonna be playing this one I know for sure that there's a lot of people that look at this game and say this game ain't even worth my time because it's just a Kanto remake yet again with no new stuff into it, just removed features and the next generation is coming next year, so why am I gonna spend 60 bucks on this? Honestly, you're totally right. If that's your opinion, you're totally right. You should not spend your 60 bucks on this game if you don't want a game that is mainly focused for Pokemon Go players, you know? If you don't play Pokemon Go especially, don't play this game, honestly. If you don't like Pokemon Go, don't play this game. That's another thing, do not play this game. If you don't like Pokemon Go at all, you're probably not gonna like this game. I mean, it's not as bad as Go, it's not the same as Go, that's what I should say. And Pokemon Go is not bad, okay? It's not bad. It's just its own really different thing for mobile. But, it's... Not the same, but it has a lot of features compared to Go. So if you did not like Go, you're not gonna like this, probably. So I'm one of those that I find Pokemon Go okay. It is okay on mobile, honestly. It is sometimes a bit addictive. So I can understand people liking playing that game. I can understand it. It just takes a lot of your time. So I personally do not play it, because it really takes a lot of your time. But in this case, I kind of want to see how it goes with an actual console game. But I personally already, just by seeing it, I just don't... I can see why people would not like it. That's why I'm making this video. So again, if you're not a fan of Pokemon Go overall, this probably is not your game. So definitely wait for the next generation. Watch Let's Plays of this, watch how it works, you'll be good you'll be good. You will not need to play this game. If you're a fan of Pokemon and you play everything and, and you like everything and you care about everything and you want to collect everything, go for it. Go for it because I don't think 60 bucks is a bad uh, exchange for this game because this game will have its decent amount of things and it will have its decent amount of fun. So again, it's just that it's very specific for its public. If you think you're gonna like it, it will be worth it. If you think you're not gonna like it, then it will definitely not be worth it. And this sounds like a very basic opinion of... Of course, you only get a game if you like it. If you don't like the game, you're not gonna get it. Yeah, it is like that, but... What I mean is that it goes far beyond that. It's the details of the game. You really need to inform yourself about this game so you don't make a bad choice, because a lot of people could look at this game overall and think, Oh, it's just a brand new game for the Switch. The main, the new main Pokemon game. Let me get it. It's a remake only, so it will be fun. And then they get the game, they start playing, then be like, wait, what the fuck is this? Like, you don't actually get to do wild battles. Um, this is not what I wanted. And there it is. That's how you make a mistake. So this is why I'm making this video and talking about it. And personally, this game is for specific fans, and it's not for all the fans, it, it really is not. So if you're a fan of mostly of Go, and you don't care about the wild battles, if you don't care about the game being easier and being simplistic, hey, 
this is your game you know they definitely focused on all of that which is something that i really wanted to talk about as well is that game freak that's the problem they have they recently have been focusing a lot on mobile games and how kids want easier games and all that stuff and that's actually not true i don't know where they're getting that mind that mindset from because that's not true i don't know who told them that kids like easier games and faster games that's not how it is that is not how it is that's how a mobile game should be this is not a mobile game this is supposed to be a console game console game is to sit down at home and enjoy it and play it and take your time you know and they're forgetting about how their games used to be they're just trying to change it too much like they had their own unique features that got everyone's attention like in x and y they had new me the mega evolution that was such a cool thing it called everyone's attention a lot of fans older fans came back to pokemon because of that they could have continued with magas we still want more magas game freak is not giving more magas why why is it not happening i don't know then they moved to this z move thing which Honestly, it was more thought towards little kids, and I mean, it's still acceptable, it's still okay, it could still be in the games, and it will still be. It's a cool thing, but you could definitely see the difference of the hype. Z-Moves did not have a lot of hype behind it, it was more of a fun thing for little kids when they would play the game. It was not something to call the older fans' attention. So, that's why I'm saying, they're changing the formula so much to the point where they're focusing their attention only to fast easy little kid games that's it and that's not what pokemon should be pokemon has never been that especially the first games it was not easy it was not simple and it was not fast to go through and it it was not for little kids because there was some really creepy descriptions and some really creepy stuff going on on the first game so I don't know. That's just my thoughts, though. Again, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee coming out in less than a month. Decide for yourself if you think you should play this game or not. This is definitely not for everyone, so don't feel bad if you think this is not the game you should be supporting, honestly. I do recommend, of course, every Pokemon game, uh, Pokemon fan, if you like the franchise, of course, support it. And, uh, I mean, enjoy the game. It will have its own fun things. It will have... 151 competitive it will have the neat post game thing master trainer stuff it will have at least a new pokemon on it and we don't know if we'll get any other features and maybe extra stuff for connection with the brand new games that will come out next year so we're gonna have to wait and see for all that maybe my opinion even will change after playing the game but that's what i think of it right now so make your choices and thoughts after watching this let me know in the comments down below what do you think which version are you gonna get if you get these games are you gonna get pikachu or eevee let me know down below and hopefully this was a clear video and i explained everything to you guys honestly because i've tried my best to talk about everything we know about these games there's a lot and um, i tried my best so hopefully i helped you guys decide if you want to get the game as well so yeah let me know all that down below in the comments thank you all for watching if you watched through this entire video honestly hashtag beast army on the comments if you did watch everything let me know your thoughts and of course if you have enjoyed fire punch that like button down below for the support on the channel subscribe for more pokemon and dragon ball stuff and i'll catch you all on the next one so until then everyone as always stay beast see ya